Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying. My master's a moron. This, uh, I think, I can't say for sure yet because I just started the game, but I have a fe feeling this one will appeal to my traditional roguelike viewers. And uh, hey, it's been a while, hasn't it? How you doing? Um, I am actually playing this with a numpad, so it's got numpad support. I appreciate that. You know what I could really go for right now? Uh, a beer. I wish for a beer, Genie. This really doesn't work the way people say. I can't just magically poof you up a beer. I have to go find one. There used to be casks in the basement before the monsters started renting it out. You rent your basement to monsters? They pay well and always on time. Uh, purely the basics, let's increase that raw damage and your survivability. Not enough coin. Um, so you're a genie, you have a, uh, someone has taken your, your uh, lamp and you, but you know, secretly you're also a djinn. You are a trickster and you're trying to get free. The only way to get free is if your master wishes for your freedom or if your master dies to the hand of someone who isn't you. So those are the terms. And outside of that, I have no idea what we can expect here. The lamp obviously doesn't speak to you. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, that's fine. But you somehow know it's your home. That it has a habit of offering you strength when you need it. The lamp glows at your presence. We don't have enough money to buy any of this stuff. All right, so let's uh, go down. We do not have diagonal movement, by the way, at least not yet, not something I, I have yet. So we'll, we'll see what the basement has to, to offer for us. We do have turn-based, tile-based movement. It's it's been a, a, it's been a minute since I've seen it. All right, what do we got? We got some money. Can I wait? It doesn't look like we can wait. Um, that is a that's a decision we've made. Uh, it's interesting to me, like when it comes to traditional roguelikes or roguelikes in general. There, there is a decision to be made about how many of the staple mechanics we're going to keep. You know, are we going to have waiting? Are we going to have diagonal movement? This game has chosen to have neither. But it is, it is a, it is a decision that basically every single uh, traditional roguelike has to consider. Like you know, when I think about um, made the uh, decision, no, no diagonal movement. Diagonal movement is actually two movements, uh, which makes a lot of sense. I can I can appreciate that that is a decision made. So we've got we've made a bit of money. We almost have enough to buy something. I'm wondering if we, you know, my my question is is this the kind of uh, roguelike we're going to be like trying to make it as far as possible, die and then go back and upgrade some stuff, you know, ye old meta progression. That's always my concern. That's always a question. Like take take out or remove, like remove remove or add as much as you want. But uh, my question is always going to be. Do I have to die in order to progress? That's always my question. Uh, you know, again, for, for people who like that, that's fine. I don't uh, hold anything against you. Uh, I do, however, just want to know for my own sake. I, I'm dying and I don't think I can do anything about it. I died. No! You have been defeated, but even death won't release you from your bond. Uh, your master calls to you from the distance. Answer master's call. You'll never be as awesome as me, though. Um, so I didn't keep all my gold, but I kept some. Plus one damage and plus ten HP for this life only. Repurchasable. Okay, that's interesting. So we don't have permanent upgrades. What we have instead are semi-permanent upgrades. Per they're, they're true for this life only. And then we make it further into the dungeon and then hopefully we get enough gold that we can repurchase those same upgrades and hopefully more as well. I will say that's an interesting way of doing meta progression. I haven't really seen that one that done before. Um, do I like it any more or less? I don't know yet. It really comes down to the fact that, uh, and I am going to talk about this even though we've certainly beaten this dead horse. Um, but you know, new people are going to be discovering the channel and they haven't ne necessarily heard my spiel before. My, my issue really is, uh, objectively I'm going to be better on this run than I am in the last run. And the last run I got so absolutely demolished that it's clear to me I, I, the, the deck was stacked against me. I couldn't progress far without the upgrades. 
That's just true. And so it really comes down to uh, this is no longer necessarily a game of skill as it is a game of longevity or stamina. Like I, I just have to die enough times to get enough money to get the upgrades that I need. And I don't find that that particular gameplay loop is, is ever as interesting to me as a, a traditional roguelike or a roguelike that has been balanced to be beaten on the first try. The, the argument is usually, well, you can beat it on the first try, you just have to be ridiculously good at the game. Uh, you can you can keep that argument, honestly. I, I, I have no use for it. I will also say, I mean, seeing as we have done away with waiting and diagonal movement, it seems to me there's little I can do in some of these circumstances, but just take damage. Dodged. A, a little bit of the nuance has been removed from uh, our, our tile-based tactical movement. But I do, it's it's early yet. I, ha I don't know yet if um, those are available to us. And I just don't know it yet. We are going to die soon. I may as well use WASD, honestly, because there's, the numpad is like completely pointless. We have died. All right, so now we can, we can buy this again. Uh, oh, we don't have enough to buy both. Increases auto attack damage. There's an auto attack? I will say, you gotta, you gotta keep an eye out for the things that have like a s slight outline because they have more money. I'm really not sure how I'm supposed to approach some of these enemies, I gotta say. Like, there is no way I could approach that enemy without taking some damage. And maybe that's just the, the that's the call, you know, like, you're not gonna be able to fight certain enemies without taking damage. I guess it's a random who, like, what monster gets the key. Oh, I'm gonna die here, aren't I? Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. So you're gonna have to, like, just take on pretty much every monster until you find the one that has the key. Okay. So you can maybe provoke them into doing their super attack and that actually stops them for a moment. So like, for instance, this spider I know has a, uh, a special attack that um, delays him. Yeah, there, there it is. Oh, I still ended up taking damage. All right. Well, I definitely killed more. So yeah, I, I found 240, but I only keep 108. Interesting. Uh, increases max health by 25. So these are permanent. Offer it valuables to get bonuses. Unlock crystal spells to find and use in your battles. All right, let's get that. That sounds just like good. And uh, we'll, we'll get some extra max health as well. And then we'll get the run buff. So we have a spell now. How can we use it? Shadow bolt. Shadow pierces the enemy. Okay. Oh, we have, we click on it. Okay. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. How, how how many of those do we get? Oh, it uses up mana. Okay. And then do we have uh, recharge on the on the mana? When do we get our mana back? Uh, this is a very small gripe, but a, a gripe nonetheless is there's a slight delay um, between movement. Like when you when you press a direction to move, you, there's a, like a small animation, and it's just enough to slow things down a bit. I'd either say either quicken up the animation or, yeah, honestly, just quicken up the animation because it, it like that small delay has me hitting the button quite a lot. That it, it just takes a little bit longer than it than I'd like. Okay, you, let's use our spell, and that actually the spell doubles as a delay because it delays us for a turn. But I don't know how we're going to get our, our mana back is the only thing. I guess uh, flasks are confirmed a thing, so... Okay. Oh, is that a new crystal? New spell? Ether Shard. Oh, mana charge. Massive but short-range AoE attack shreds through your enemies. Um, okay, I see. So we can either use that to charge our mana or we can swap the spell. Interesting. I kind of like that mechanic. So let's let's give it a go. Um, can we hurt ourselves with it? Oh, I see. It's it's around us exclusively. Let's see if we can't uh, wrangle a bunch of enemies together. Yes, and then do an AOE. Bam. Except now I'm out of mana.
Well, I don't. I will. I won't say that was worth it because it wasn't. <laughs> um, I don't know if I like this AOE as much. Rain of fire. A rain of fire that does AOE and burns the ground for three turns. Yeah, all right, let's try that. Now we are out of mana, so I can't actually try that until I get some more mana. There, there's a key. I'm gonna forgo fighting that last enemy because uh, there's really no point. I think I'm going to die on this floor. Ooh, 10 mana. Oh, there we go. Wow, it did a lot of damage. Still on fire. I'm gonna die. Yep, there it is. So can we get some more permanent upgrades? More max health by 25? Yep, sure. Skill maxed. Um, big run buff, plus five damage, plus 50 health for this run. Unlock the chance for enemies to drop armor. Yeah, I mean, that sounds just objectively better. I think that uh, if, if uh, someone was to ask me why I don't like meta progression, it might, I, I might point them towards this game, not to be completely snarky about it, I'm not. Uh, I actually kind of, I, I do like this game, and in fact, this is the closest to winning me over to meta progression that I've, I've gotten. Um, but I still end up feeling a little bit resentful of the fact that uh, there's, there is absolutely no chance for me to win. And I mean, the game doesn't make any pretense about that. This is like perhaps the most egregious example of this because we're actually unlocking like staple mechanics as we, uh, you know, throw our lives into the hole. Um, because like, you know, there is no way we were going to make it very far without having the ability to collect armor or having spells or even having the ability to wait. Um, so this, this, it's like, this is the perfect example for me of like why I'm not a huge fan of meta progression because it's like, yeah, basically, um, the question has always been, did I lose because I wasn't good enough? at the game or did I lose because I didn't get enough upgrades? And in this game, there is absolutely no question. I don't think that this is a bad game. I think this is actually a really good game because it really doesn't make any um, pretense about the fact that this is this is a casual little adventure. You're not, you're not playing this game to try and like get really good at it or uh, like try and get the staff of Yendor. Like your, your victories are going to be kind of short-lived and nothing really means all that much. You're just playing it to have a little bit of a fun. You know, it's a coffee break traditional roguelike. And I I, w I applaud that because I think that there could be more uh, of that. You know, coffee break traditional roguelikes are in short supply. Personally, I really like uh, desktop dungeons for something like that. I will say removing both diagonal movement and waiting kind of really does remove most of the nuance in um, tile-based movement and tactical, like, you know, traditional roguelike tactics. And, you know, maybe that's on purpose, but I don't know if it works towards the game's benefit. I really don't know if removing the ability to wait is doing much for this game. Like, this game isn't out yet, so it could be that some of the features that I'm, I'm looking for or some of the things I'm... Um, uh, yearning for are, are, are planned to be added. I don't know if this game is going to release in early access. Summon a tornado that does damage and knocks back, uh, back enemies for three turns. Okay, that sounds cool. Don't, you do, like, you don't really get a lot of mana. So you, like, I, I don't want to use it. Especially some of these, uh, spells that they give you while you're playing the game. Um... Like, y y <laughs> they cost a lot of mana. So you ha you can use them like once, basically. <laughs> Casting that spell as a weight is, uh, is interesting. I guess that's, you know, that does kind of justify not having weight. And it certainly makes spells more valuable because, you know, not being able to wait really is a blow. <laughs> what is that? What? Finally, a stein of beer. Finally, who who just leaves a mug of beer alone in a room like this? Oh well, even if it's old, that'll just add to the chance of killing him. You drop poison in the beer. Well, technically, I'd be poisoning him. If he's the one to drink the beer, he will have killed himself. 
You hand the beer to your master. He smells it, inhaling deeply, and then walks towards an innocent plant to the side of the room. Master pours the beer into the plant. Why would you do that? I thought you wanted a beer. Master gestures to the plant. It looks thirsty. When I'm thirsty, I want a beer. The plant warps and shifts and then grows teeth and comes alive. A burp comes from the plant. See, he was thirsty. Why do you doubt me? Thanks, I was really dehydrated. <laughs> Increase flask heal amount by 10 health. Interesting. Sure. So we're, we're upgrading our flasks now. And we have a new new mechanic. But that means we spent all our gold, so now I can't get the... Uh... I remember on this one adventure I had found this unique ornate magical chest. I wish for you to retrieve it from the basement. You want me to get you a chest? That's your wish? Should be simple enough for a genie, shouldn't it? As you wish, master. I'm a mighty adventurer. I guess I could show you a trick or two. So I feel like I see where this is going. Or <laughs> the, the genie is going to try and kill his master every single time he brings back one of... Brings back the thing that they wished for. And at the end, they're still not going to die, but they're going to be so grateful that they'll wish that the genie was free. How, what a heartfelt story that is. I, I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate this game. If it came across that, uh, you know, as a lot of my comments as being criticisms, uh, I am sorry about that. Um, it's, you know, like, I have a knee-jerk reaction when it comes to meta progression, and I think that maybe I explained well why for this game. That being said, this is one of the few games that's actually sold uh, meta progression to me in one form or another, and I appreciate that. Um, I think that unlocking some of the nuance of, of a traditional roguelike while you play this game is an interesting method. Um, and definitely this is not gonna be a, a traditional roguelike that you take very seriously. And I think that does work towards its benefit. I think that it is basically just a, a casual kind of coffee break game. And if you approach it like that, then you will have a good time with this. Uh, but uh, if you're like me and you take these games probably too seriously, you might feel a little bit frustrated at uh, dying a few times in order to unlock some of the extra nuance. But that being said, I still enjoyed it and I, and I enjoyed my time with this game. I might even uh, play it some more um, for the Tuesday stream. But uh, this game's not out yet. I may feature it again when it actually comes up, but it was my Masters of Moron. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Oh, get it up, 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 get it up,